What have you done in her life? Rejection. Who else is in there? Ooh, anger. How long ago did you enter her life? At seven years old. At seven years old. And since then, what you've been do what have you been doing in her life? Tormenting her. What have you caused in her relationships? Destroying her marriage. What have you done in her finances? <laughs> spirit of poverty. You brought spirit of poverty. Have you touched her health? <laughs> yes. And you unclean spirit right now. Your time has expired and you're leaving her body. You anger, your rejection. You generational curse right now. You're coming out. You're coming out. Out of her body. Out. Out of every part of her soul right now. You're coming out. You're coming out. This is it. You are free in Jesus name. You are free in Jesus name. Angel, we're so happy to have you with us tonight and last night and we saw that you received deliverance. Would you please start sharing uh, where are you from and what brought you to this conference? Um, my name is Angela and um, I'm from Portland, Oregon and um, I actually saw um, on Facebook um, a small clip um, of um, the Race to Deliverance um, conference and um, I just knew I had to be there. I saw it last week and I said, I've got to be there. I'm packing my bags and I'm going this weekend. Come on. Yes. <laughs> Angela, would you please share what was the things uh, that you were struggling with and what caused you to believe that you needed deliverance? I come from a background of um, drug addiction and alcohol. And um, through my addiction, I drug my three kids along with it. And um, when I um, finally got clean and sober, I went into a rehab treatment center. And um, my oldest son was too old to go into treatment with me, and he went into foster care. And um, he's 25 right now, my oldest son. Um, but the last six years, he's been um, living on the streets, um, homeless, and in his drug addiction. And um, I carried that guilt with me, and I've been praying for him like a mother should. But I got weary, and I started believing the lies that the enemy was telling me. And so unbelief started settling in. And it started destroying my prayer life and the intimacy with the Lord. It started hardening my heart. And um, I, I, I felt like I just could, I couldn't pray anymore. And I needed, I was desperate. I needed, I needed my prayer life back. I needed that intimacy back with the Lord. And um, I needed to be able to pray for my children. And so last night when you came here for the first time, you were in the prayer line. Would you please share with us all what were you experiencing? What were you feeling and going through during the prayer line and right before the prayer line? I was feeling the manifestations already arising in me before I even came through the prayer line as I was sitting down. And I remember even sitting there and I was just kind of felt kind of scared. But even the message last night just... I remember saying to the Lord, I do not want to leave here and not be delivered. I'm receiving my deliverance tonight, and I don't care what it feels like, what it looks like. And um, as I, I remember, I kept having to run to the bathroom, and anxiety was rising. My heart felt like it was coming out of my chest. My mouth was dry. Um, it, I felt scared, but I continued to walk through that prayer line. And as you were in the, being prayed for, what were you experiencing at that moment? Well, right before the pastor was praying for me, um, I, when I was in the prayer line, I remember just shaking. I was shaking so bad. My flesh just, I could tell these things didn't want to go. And I remember looking down, and I saw the pastor walking down, and he was praying for people. And I remember looking over like, oh, my God, here he comes. <laughs> He's coming, and he's getting closer. And the closer he got, the I, I felt the power. 
I felt the heaviness, the weightiness, and the power of God coming even closer to me. And I knew, and, and when, he, when he started praying for me, it was, there was just no going back. There was no going back. And I, um, I began to just scream and just let this thing out. And um, there was a point where I felt like, I don't know if this thing is going to come out. I don't know if I can do it. But just like giving childbirth, it feels like you just can't do it. And I just felt my spirit, just give it one more push, you got to. And I felt that push. I gave one more push, the one more scream out for the Lord to deliver me. Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ, for his delivering power, for his love. Come on. And what happened next? <laughs> well, I was set free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, after, um, well, I, I, the anxiety, everything just left. I felt when I was on the floor um, and gave it that last push, it was like I like blacked out. And I knew I could feel these things leave my body. And I knew I was set free. And one of the biggest things that um, was, and I was like blinded by it, by this spirit of guilt and shame. But what was so important to me is that the Lord re-softened my heart. And I left that stony heart on the altar last night. And I can have intimacy and a, a real prayer life again with the Lord. And that was the biggest thing for me, was to feel that softness. Come on, that is such a wonderful, wonderful thing. To have intimacy with our Father. You know, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Okay, and he came to steal that intimacy. Steal the relationship that she used to have. But the Lord Jesus Christ, he is loving and powerful. He is the one who restores. He is the one who delivers. He is the one who heals. And he's the only one who is able to break the chains of Satan and demons off of our lives. And we're just so happy that it happened to you last night. We thank the Lord. Would you please also share what happened um, right after that? So um, last night, even before the deliverance, um, I, I text uh, my son's name to have written on the board. And I haven't spoken to him um, in a couple months, you know, and... Um, after my deliverance last night, the Lord gave me a dream and a vision. You see, because every time I saw my son, all I saw was him in the natural, what he looked like, dirty, homeless, on drugs. And that's, that's what I was agreeing with. But I had been praying for a long time, Lord, give me a vision of what, of what you've called him to be. And last night, <laughs> I had a vision... <laughs> of my son and he walked through these doors and he was all clean and he was healthy and I could see, I could see the glory of God on him. Just hours ago, just hours ago, I got a phone call. Come on, it's just getting better. Hallelujah. What was the phone call about? <laughs> I answered the phone. He said, Mama. And she has not talked to her son in two months. <sighs> I was so excited to hear his voices that you have no idea. I was rejoicing in my spirit. And he says, Mom, <laughs> he knows when I pray for him. He said, I just went through a big battle. <laughs> but God is good. And I love hearing your voice, Mom. <laughs> come on.
Come on, we can do better than this. Let's give God the glory, God the praise. Hallelujah. It's so wonderful when God gives you a different vision for the person you're praying for. The way God sees her son. Now she sees him like that. And we're going to believe and stand in faith for his salvation and for his deliverance, full deliverance in Jesus' mighty name. Angela, lastly, would you please share a word of advice to people, those that are here or those that are watching us right now and they might find themselves in a similar situation, praying for someone, their child is lost or on drugs or they themselves going through some things, what would you suggest them? Be desperate. Be desperate. Just what they were talking about tonight, having a loved one, having a son or a daughter, you get desperate and you even start finding out the things that are in you when you start praying for your loved ones because I realized I didn't have the faith and hope that I really needed to get through it. Don't just be desperate, be hungry and keep moving and I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how silly, how stupid, how ridiculous you look. It is worth the freedom. It is worth the freedom. Come on, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Thank you so much, thank you so much. What a wonderful testimony. I loved, you know, Joe said that desperation has a sound and that sound is, it comes from your spirit. And I hope that you have that for your loved ones today as you pray for them because God is about to answer that prayer in Jesus' name.